Robin Metcalf is the statewide director of the Open Doors Outreach Network, a 24-7, 365 network of care and treatment for survivors of sex trafficking aged 10 through 24 in 32 Florida counties. Robin received her Bachelor of Social Work degree, Master of Social Work with a concentration in Social Policy and Administration, and Master of Public Administration from Florida State University. She was named a 2020 Notable Knoll from the Florida State University Alumni Association, recognizing graduates that have made exceptional achievements and significant contributions to their profession, community slash society, or the university. In 2016, the College of Social Work recognized Robin with a Distinguished Young Alumni Award, a prestigious award recognizing outstanding graduates within the past 10 years who have demonstrated significant leadership and exceptional contributions to social work. Robin is a former guardian ad litem, Relay for Life of North Leon Leadership Committee member, volunteer training assistant with 211 Big Ben, and is a current member of the Junior League of Tallahassee. She also serves as treasurer for the Florida State University College of Social Work Alumni Group. So uh, the Open Doors Outreach Network is a program that's been around in Florida since July of 2017. Um, we are funded to provide services in 32 counties across the state of Florida. And the services we provide is that we have teams that are on call 24 seven, um, and we are able to serve victims of sex trafficking ages 10 to 24. So when a victim is identified, they're referred to the Open Doors Outreach Network teams, um, and they employ survivor mentors, regional advocates, and clinicians, and they provide wraparound services to those individuals. Um, they do everything from crisis intervention to counseling services, uh, case management, information and referral, court advocacy, really whatever that individual needs um, in order to help them in their current situation. So um, the Open Doors Outreach Network, our goal is to really fit within the community that we're serving. And our services really do vary slightly from county to county based on what resources that community has available. Um, when I talked about the program, I mentioned one of the positions we have is the regional advocate. And what that um, position's role is, is to really understand um, who's who in the community, what services are available, what services aren't available, so that they are able to work with the victims we're serving and help pair them with other resources in the community if there's something they need that we don't provide within Open Doors. So those community partnerships are huge for the success of this program and for the success of the individuals we work with. Uh, we recently did a survey with our teams across the 32 counties, and they had partnerships with over 700 organizations, businesses, community groups, faith-based organizations, all of which we um, interact with, whether they're referring victims to us for services, we're referring victims to them for additional services, or we're working together to come up with solutions to support these individuals. So I think we have a few elements of our work that make us unique and different um, from other organizations working with this population. The first is that you know we are a network of services. So at Voices for Florida, um, where I work, we serve as a backbone organization. Um, we don't actually provide direct services to victims of sex trafficking. Instead, we partner with existing organizations across the state that have a history of working with this client population and we refer to them as our network providers. And they're the ones that um, provide the direct services. So as the backbone organization, we take care of everything else that goes into running a statewide program, except for the direct services. So we interface with the Florida legislature, we um, do the grant management, the contract management, we do education and training, setting service provision, um, really everything that's necessary so that our teams on the ground are able to focus on one thing, which is providing the direct services. Um, what's great about this approach, though, is that 
we have those providers across the state making up our network. And so they're all working together as one. Even though they're different nonprofits in different areas, they still work together and they all bring different strengths to the table. We have some that are faith-based. We have others that are survivor-led. We have network providers that are big and some that are small. And we're really able to leverage the strengths of each of those providers. I would say another unique element of our work is that we do employ survivor mentors. So survivor mentors, they are survivors of trafficking. And it's really important because when working with the clients that we serve, they're able to build a trusting relationship with them uh, much faster than maybe a, a clinician would be able to. Um, they've experienced similar trauma. They've had to navigate similar systems of care. And so they're able to, our survivor mentors are able to walk alongside uh, the victims we're working with. Um, I'd say another unique element is that our program doesn't have a formal endpoint. And so we really exist to meet the individual needs of the victims we serve. So we could have an individual who's leveraging the program multiple times a week um, because they're in crisis. We could also have a victim who is coming in contact with us maybe once a month as they need um, some additional support. So it's this idea of really being there, being survivor-centered, being victim-centered, and meeting those individual needs. So Open Doors, we've been impacted by COVID-19 as everybody has. Um, we've seen reports come out that the number of calls, um, this came from the Polaris Project, which operates the National Human Trafficking Hotline. And what they have stated is that the calls to their hotline increased by 40% between um, what they had in April 2019 to April 2020. So we know that there are larger reports of trafficking happening. Um, a lot of people believe this is because um, there's an increased access to internet and computers for youth because of things being shut down, especially during that time when kids were not in school and they were doing school from home. Um, another issue that's coming up is that because people are struggling financially, um, unfortunately, turning to selling kids online for um, financial resources has become more of a reality during this time. In regards to responding to this need, um, we, of course, had to move majority of our services to telehealth. Um, because of technology, we were able to still have those regular interactions with the clients that we serve. Uh, we also had to get creative, which I know many other service providers had to do during this time. Um, utilizing things like doing yoga over Zoom or watching, um, you know, movies and having movie watch parties over a feature that different companies offered for online streaming, um, doing drive-by parades, doing meetings, socially distance in front of clients' homes, really anything um, in that moment that the teams could do to, to meet the individual needs of the clients, um, even though it wasn't traditional. So we've looked at this recently, and um, the needs are, are all over the map. Um, for the clients we've served to date with Open Doors, some of the primary needs that they've had um, during intake is a need for housing and shelter. Um, something we're really proud of is that we were recently awarded a federal grant through OVC um, for transitional housing support for survivors over the age of 18. Um, and there's constantly a need, whether it's more permanent housing, emergency housing, transitional, um, that's ongoing. Another need is uh, for legal assistance. Many of the survivors that we work with, um, they actually have a criminal record, and it's oftentimes for crimes that were committed while they were being victimized. And of course, having a criminal record makes it difficult to find employment, to um, potentially access public benefits, to get into school. So specialized legal assistance for record expungement is, is important. Um, we also see uh, clients who need um, medical assistance, um, physical health, dental health, 
Uh, we have those that need access just to basic needs, you know, food, clothing, hygiene products. So it's really all over the map. But for us, I think the the ones that we're focused on the most right now would be the housing and the the specialized legal assistance. So um, we have found that approximately 40% of the youth that we work with are dependent children. And so, of course, we work with the Department of Children and Families for those youth, and that's typically where they're referred to us from is from DCF. Um, we also have a strong relationship with the child protective investigators um, in our different areas where we have services, especially those that specialize in human trafficking. Uh, we participate in their multidisciplinary team staffings when those are held for youth so that we can assist in identifying the right resources for that youth. And then we also participate in the local task forces um, that DCF plays a major role with it in along with other child welfare professionals that are at the table. I always tell people it's really important to educate yourself on what trafficking looks like and how to identify it. Um, there are so many great resources out there if somebody is interested in learning more about the signs of trafficking. Uh, some really great resources I always refer people to would be, of course, Voices for Florida, um, our website where I work. Um, also, there is um, Shared Hope International, which is a, it's a national group. Uh, there is the Polaris Project. Um, there's also Department of Homeland Security has the Blue Campaign. So there's many resources out there to educate yourself. Um, but I also tell people to keep in mind, there's a lot of sensationalized information out there about what trafficking looks like. So really educate yourselves on the reality of trafficking. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions out there that people should be aware of. Um, one thing I always tell people is, you know, trafficking doesn't happen just because there's a Super Bowl or a major event. Trafficking happens every day of the year. And so really understanding those realities so that you're constantly aware in case you do come in contact with a youth or an adult who you believe is being exploited, and then you can seek out help for them.